Hi beautiful people, I thought on this rainy day that I would, before it's too late, talk about the books that I read in the month of November. It's grey and chilly and rainy outside, so it felt like a good time. Also you can welcome the Christmas tree in the background. I'm gonna try to do these quite quick fire, um, and I will link to any videos below, downstairs. Um, where I talk about these either more in depth or just that I dedicate some minutes to. The first book I read in November was very fitting and it was Autumn by Ali Smith. First Ali Smith and it's the first book in her seasonal quartet. I had a really, really dry reading period before reading Autumn and this really jump-started something in my reading. This I talk about in a vlog, so I'll find that and put it below. The story is following our main character, Elizabeth, and her friendship with this man named Daniel, who started as her neighbor when she was very young, and they, yeah, developed this really sweet relationship. They would go on walks together. He's much older than her, and most of the book is in present day. He's about 100 years old, um, sort of on his deathbed, and she's going weekly to visit him. This book is really interesting because you get a lot of surreal elements that come in the form of describing his dreams, and then you also get flashbacks to their relationship when she was young and his heavy influence of literature, reading, and specifically art. This is a post-Brexit novel, so it's very political in that sense. We're looking at Britain after Brexit, what that is doing to the society. I really loved it. It's very thinky. It's very big brain energy. It's very art influenced, which I really loved. A kind of character that moves through the book is this female pop artist, one of the only female artists in the pop art movement in Britain, named Pauline Bodie. I think that's how you say her name. References to her art, and her art is quite feminist and very political as well, so it was just very, very interesting. I think many people really love Ali Smith, and others really don't connect to her voice, um, so I find myself um, with the first group. I really loved this, and I can't wait to read Winter, which is the next one. Now we're getting into the Tiny Book Challenge, which was hosted by Jessica from Jessica's Bookstack on Instagram. Challenge in one week to read as many tiny books under around 150 pages as you can, so I read one, two, three, four, five. First one was Mouthpieces by Emer McBride. This uh, is a collection of three short plays. S yeah, they're like monologues. I wrote on Goodreads. First two pieces didn't work for me. I remember um, thinking that the idea of reading McBride's three plays would be really interesting for me because I read her novel Strange Hotel and thought that she just has such a creative and interesting approach to language, but it just didn't it hit the mark for me, the first two. I remember the third one being very interesting and sharp and smart and beautiful. It's like a monologue of a woman and she's sort of talking about what it means and feels like to be a woman in the world through lenses of specific female stereotypes and describes them and everything. Yeah, I would like to reread that one, actually. So that was good, but overall I was a bit disappointed. I read a five-star read, which is Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. This is a really great example, and I said this before, of a small book that can do so many things. It's the power of a tiny book when you write so, so well like Herrera does. He's a Mexican author. I've recently got a, an access to a library copy of The Transmigration of Bodies, which is another novel by him, so I'm really excited to read that. It basically follows a story of a girl, I think her name is 
Machina. She's from a small Mexican village and she is sent by her mother to the other side, which is America, to find her brother who crossed over, um, I, I guess, some time before. <laughs> and it's about her journey there. Um, and yes, it is sort of an allegory. You should watch both Ignacia from Literary Iggy and Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books. You should watch both of their um, reviews and thoughts about this book because very interesting what each person gets from this. It's definitely dealing with migration, immigration, and also death, mirroring what Rebecca said because I really um, resonated with what she said, <laughs> which is it's sort of like an a death allegory, like a, like the death of self when you move from one culture to the next, death of language. And also he's just talking about what happens to language, like Spanish and English when you move through across borders, doing some really interesting things with the actual language in the book. There's also a translator's note at the end, which was really fascinating. I think that this is a really, it's a short book um, and you really should read it. Like I would love everyone to read this. Um, so I don't wanna say too much cause I feel like you should just experience it. But the writing is incredible. Each chapter, I was just in awe. Then I read my first, um, a nice Nin book, which was House of Incest. I said, this is my introduction to a nice Nin and I am obsessed, give me more. The sheer depth and magnitude of what this woman does with language is astonishing. If you like super poetic language where it's full and dense with a lot of imagery and sensational language, um, it's very visceral. If you like that kind of thing, then you will love this. Hard to say what it's really about. But I do know that she wrote this sort of as response and a description of her dreams. Also dealing with lust and our main narrator, this woman's different urges and like sexual desires and being at odds with them. I just thought it was crazy. Like I was reading it thinking, wow, sh this is crazy. Amazing um, that someone can write in that way. And she's known for her erotic fiction. This is the first novel that she ever wrote, so you see those themes already coming in and her grappling with them. Then I read Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass, which is Lana Del Rey's poetry collection. I had this on my shelf for a while and felt it was time to get to it in the Tiny Challenge. I enjoyed it because I enjoy Lana, I like her music, um, I like her brand. The kind of um, world she builds for herself that you dive into in this is enjoyable, but like I said in another video, it's not like groundbreaking um, poetry. If you're someone who's really, really, really into poetry, I would say this one isn't isn't one you need to run and read, but if you like her and you're a fan like me, then maybe give it a shot. Next, we've got two more. I read The Divorce by Cezao Ira. This one was such a disappointment to me, I have to say, because the first section of this book, basically what this book is about, is a man who is traveling after a divorce hence the title. He goes to stay in a different city than where he's living currently, and he's meeting different people, going to different coffee shops, kind of wandering, and he sees an incident happen in one of the coffee shops where a man happens to be riding his bike or walking his bike next to the cafe, and a pool of water that's collected in the awning above him falls on him and drenches him. And that moment sort of instigates this wild ride of different small stories and connections. He recognizes someone in the cafe who recognizes someone else, and it sort of is like this domino effect. I really loved um, specifically this sort of description of a moment that he, this character who got the water 
on him has with this woman who recognizes him in the cafe. They used to be, um, they knew each other as children. They went to the same boarding school and the school caught on fire and you kind of are shot in and dive into this almost magical realism sort of and surreal description of these two characters trying to get out of this school that's on fire and I thought that that section was brilliant and then everything after I really didn't like. It just lost me, I wasn't interested, I didn't understand, I didn't... Yeah, it just completely lost me. So that, like, the first section, I think I'll remember for a really long time. Like, it's really, really strong. But then my disappointment was even more vivid because I was, I just wanted it to continue on that trajectory and it just lost me. I am interested to read more of his work. He has a large body of work, so um, a lot to get through. And then the last book that I read um, really at the end of November, in the last few days, was In the Woods by Tana French. This is a thick one, 600 pages. I did recently talk about this in a vlog, so I will uh, link that downstairs. Tana French is a crime mystery writer, which, like I mentioned in a previous video, is not normally what I read, um, but she came recommended by people that I trust, and I was really in the mood to read something that's similar to the kind of television I like to watch. And I wanted to kind of cozy up with a big, fat mystery book at the beginning of the winter months. Really quickly, to, to kind of summarize what this book is about, there is an incident in Knocknery, which is a small village outside of Dublin, where three children go into the woods and two of them disappear and one is found. There's something weird there. He's got like slash marks on his back. He has blood in his socks, but not in the shoes. There's some very weird, mysterious vibes about what happened there. And this child that's found, Adam Ryan, also kind of loses his memory about the whole thing. And he grows up and most of it's taking place 20 years later. He's changed his name to Rob Ryan and becomes our main character because he works as a detective. No one knows that he is the child from the crime incident 20 years prior. So him and his partner Cassie Maddox, they work for the Dublin murder squad. And they're assigned to a case where a young girl is found in Knocknery, in the same woods, in a sort of archaeological site that's going to be removed and there's gonna be a highway built over it. She's found dead there. So we're following that case and also whether it relates to 20 years prior, which is obviously triggering for our main character. And that's all I'm really gonna say about it because you know you read this kind of book for the plot. So there's not much I can say without spoiling it for you. It's sort of a spoiler in a way if you like a story where everything is tied up neatly into a bow for you at the end, you're not gonna love this because not everything is answered. So just know that going in. It actually didn't bother me. Um, I didn't have to get all the answers. Main character, so irritating. I really found him sort of pathetic with a lot of trauma. Um, so we give him that, but yeah, I really did not like his character, but it was very gripping. You know, I can DNF a lot of books just from boredom that are a lot shorter than this, and I happen, and I got all the way through, so that must say something. Very atmospheric, you know, in the woods. You're in the woods, you feel it, you smell it. That I really loved, and I think Tana French does that really well. So, yeah. Give it a shot if you want a good kind of crime atmospheric book. That's it. I'm gonna wrap myself up in this and get on with my day. Um, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you read this month, this past month, November. I can tell you that I'm currently reading Assembly by Natasha Brown and loving it. Probably hope to finish that 
today or tonight. And that's it. Um, I hope... I tried to, like, speed through that, but then maybe I missed a lot of details. Anyways, hope you're enjoying your holiday season if you're celebrating. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.